Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Eric. Uh, Matthew's over here wrenching. Got a little wood miser tech tip for you, something we run into this morning. If you run one of these long enough, you'll probably find it also. Uh, started out, what, what happened with the blade tracking? Uh, you know, from left to right, and the blade was a little too far out. So I moved the blade back in and we found some other issues. So hang on, we'll be right back. Okay, uh, let's try this again. I was having issues with the blade not tracking right from the left side of the mill to, or from the driven side to the drive side. And the, uh, the driven side, you can't adjust the pulley in and out, it's fixed. Now you can adjust the angle, but you can't adjust in and out. Now the drive side, if you get up under here, it has four adjustments, just like your idlers, rollers. You can take and move it in or out, and you can also, you know, different axis. You can do it on the X and the Y both. Uh, you can't do anything with Z, you can't go up and down. It's fixed up and down, but you can tip it in and out, and you can actually move it in and out. Uh, we fixed that. I loosened up the jam nuts on the bottom of that drive side pulley, and I wanted to push it out an eighth inch, and I had Matthew measure it, and I just lightly tapped it out an eighth inch and got it, uh, got it moved out where we wanted it. Uh, if yours has never moved, don't touch it. But mine moved last year. Yeah, right about the end of the year. For some reason, we started chewing up dry belts. Uh, and I've had a wood box for 10 years, and I've used three dry belts. We used four in a month, so two, actually. The last one lasted eight hours, and then it just exploded. And what happened is this pulley had... It had, it had walked out and was out of line with the, the drive on the motor and it was just heating up, chewing the, chewing the uh, belts off of it. This, this time it actually seemed like it backed up an eighth inch. So we got that lined up, but while we were there, uh, I raised the motor head all the way to the top and I noticed it, it, it moved. So there's a couple bolts over there, we tightened them up and uh, <sighs> Why don't we take the cover off? Uh, oh, uh, we were looking for other. Ones. Right, we, there's a cover that goes around this, and we took it off trying to see why that motor was moving when you topped it out. And this is your top two rollers. Let me bring you over here. This is your top two rollers on your mill. They ride on this side of the frame. Uh, it was covered in sawdust and diesel grease, and when I blowed it out, this bolt was laying down in the hole. I told Matthew, I said, what row? There's a problem. So this bolt had fallen out, and this one over here behind the chain was completely loose. And fortunately, you know, you hate when things break, but fortunately we found it this morning. So I was cutting, I come up out of the cut and I put it in reverse and I noticed the head wiggled at me. And, and all wood misers do, you know, the head will wiggle a little bit as you're coming back, but it waved at me. I'm like, ooh, that ain't good. Well, now I know why. Uh, not a bad idea, guys, to check these things. I mean, they're a violent machine. They run wide open. You run them hard. You ride it like a two-stroke motorcycle. You ride it like you're mad at it, <laughs> you know? Uh, it don't hurt to do a nut and bolt on these occasionally. Uh, especially you get start getting some hours on them. Things get loose. Things get moved. Um, I don't know how much damage it would have done if that other bolt fell out. It would probably... The whole head would have probably done that. Yeah, the head wouldn't fall off of it, but it would have fell over, and this piece of metal would have been like riding on a rail instead of those rollers. So, it's a good idea to take that cover off every once in a while and just look. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a bad idea to take these covers off. There's two of them. Here's... 
Here's the main one. It goes in here like that. It, it's three bolts to take it off, guys. Don't take this second, take it off. Uh, you can expect the, the tension on your belt because there is tension here. You can, I've never adjusted mine and it still don't feel like it needs adjusted. Good design, Woodmeister, appreciate that. But, you know, it is a wire item. You will have to replace it one day. Uh, this is your counter. That's what, it, it reads how many revolutions that pulley spins and turns revolutions into inches and that's what makes this uh, AccuSet work. These do fail. You will have to replace them one day. Uh, anything else on that, Matthew? This area? Oh, uh, one thing, if you ever move this drive pulley here in or out, you need to verify that you're still in line with the pulley on the back of the motor. They need to be running parallel. So if you take the drive pulley and pull it out, you may, you probably will have to take the motor pulley and pull it out an equal amount to get them running straight. If you don't, you just burn up belts. And those belts are like $34 a piece. Uh, it gets your attention pretty quick after a few of them. So. You're gonna have to use a string to make that work. Though. Yeah, you, we use a string line. Matthew can hold one end, I can hold the other. We can sign it down there. I mean, it, it's not, you don't have to get within 25 thousandths, okay? It just needs to be straight. Now that could be plus or minus a hundred thousandths or better, you know, eighth inch, but it needs to be, be running straight. The straighter, the better. Uh, anything you want to know about this, just let me know. I mean, this is things you run into. Uh, guys hobby saw it like I did for years. You don't have these kind of problems, but when you start running this thing five, six days a week, running it hard, running it like you're mad at it, Things break. It's, it's no different in your car. First hundred thousand miles, pretty good. Second hundred thousand miles, you're gonna spend some money on it. <laughs> We're on our second hundred thousand miles with this wood miser. So, and we we just spend money on maintenance, upkeep. Something breaks, you know. We try to have spare parts here to fix it. Uh, this was nothing but our, this was totally our fault from not checking and doing a nut and bolt on it and make sure everything was tight. Yeah. Simply, it's not Woodmiser's fault. It's completely mine and Matthew's fault for not taking this cover off, you know, six months ago and do a nut and bolt and make sure everything's tight. And I'll be honest with you, I've owned it for 10 years. I've had this cover off a couple times. I've never had that cover off. Yep. So, we've been learning more in the past year than we've had in the past 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Anything else we're, we're missing on this, Matthew? Yeah, just make sure they're tight. Yeah, if you can get a get a good look. There's not a whole lot under there. You got your, this is your up and down motor. This is your up and down chain. Uh, sprockets look good, but sprockets will wear out. Like I say, the belt tension looks good. Uh, Guys, I know there's a lot of debate out there. Some some people are just <laughs> almost bad as political people about whether to use diesel or water. I'll never use water on my mill again, most likely, okay? All this area right here gets covered in whatever lubricant you're using, whether it's water, whether it's dawn, whether it's uh, pine saw, you know, diesel, whatever you're using, this area right here gets covered. And I'd whole lot rather it be covered with greasy diesel sawdust than I had uh, water. I've got one spot of rust on my mill. It's right here on this cover. And that's because of water. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna use it anymore. I, don't, well, I hadn't used it in years, but I won't be going back to it. Uh, diesel and sawdust don't rot, but water and sawdust will rot. It will rust, it will make a mess. So. Uh, I think that's enough on this. I hope it helps. It's just a little quick video, something we run into. And while we're in here, we're going to nut and bolt everything we can get our hands on and make sure it's all appropriately tight. So well, we get time to look at the bearings while we got it open. Yeah, I mean, these bearings are wear out of but they look good. Uh, it was loose. I wiggled them. They didn't, <laughs> didn't have any wiggle in them when I, I got a hold of it. I just, one of them things you're like, oh, Lord. That could have been so much worse. So, 
Good Lord looks after fools and idiots, and I guess we qualify for both today. So. Guys, we appreciate you watching. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, Joe Main from uh, Industrial Cutting Tools. Great people. Great people. Uh, they don't sell the Woodmiser LT stuff, but he does sell commercial stuff. You want to get into the w, WM stuff, the bigger stuff, or your blade sharpener, stuff like that. They carry all that. Uh, also, check out Solomon from Third Beard Fishing. We appreciate him helping Matthew out and doing all our videos. That's going to do it. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to help you best I can. Appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll see you back at the mill. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.